What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today we are going to talk about one of the dumbest ideas I think I've ever heard for the future of Halo. Recently, Ryan McCaffrey from IGN had posted a tweet stating that since Halo Infinite did not reach the level, the devs over at Microsoft had expected or had hoped for that the next best action or possibly the, the most expected action would be that Microsoft or Xbox would push to fully reboot the Halo franchise. If I was coming up with the dumbest idea possible to ruin the Halo franchise in the quickest way that, that I could have ever imagined, I would think of rebooting the series. And I know that there are some fans out there that think that, hey, you know what, maybe Halo needs to you know take a decade off and create the halo series back from its old old ways and origins and you know start from halo one start from scratch and bring it back but i'm just gonna tell you straight out that's the dumbest thing i think i've ever heard there's actually multiple reasons why this is a dumb idea now first off to understand why i think it's pretty stupid you, you have to understand the difference between remasters remakes and an actual reboot and firstly remasters are almost like a refresh in the graphics trying to make them in a higher fidelity in the current age so you take a game like halo master chief collection right and which is a collection of old Halo games and they kind of add a little bit of FPS boost to old games to make them feel a little bit more modern, right? Or even looking at specifically Halo 2 Anniversary, which was a refresh of the old game, making it look new with all the similar mechanics or similar concepts that were all there with little to no changes or even the last was part one that was brought on the playstation 5 essentially it's a remaster it was supposed to be really bringing that classic game to the new gen by having an fps boost making it look a little bit better with the new graphic power that the ps5 has then you have remakes that basically are trying to redo the animations have either new voice acting or the same voice actors but di different body animations with maybe slight adjustments and when you look at comparisons to things like dead space or resident evil 4 remake yeah we can pin we can kind of pinpoint some uh, minor adjustments like be uh, being unable to look up ashley's skirt but overall the game mechanics and the game concepts are all pretty much there but then you have reboots and this is a dirty word to a lot of people mainly because of the fact that every time i've ever seen a reboot it has com been completely gross and mishandled and I think it it's all nearly failed every single time I've ever seen one. If you want to look at the more recent examples of this, think about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And the Modern Warfare 1, or kind of as a start or reboot of the series, multiplayer-wise and gameplay-wise, was not necessarily a bad thing. It, it shows you that Activision really wanted to bring in the realism to, to Call of Duty again, like the old Call of Duty used to feel like. But the story itself was kind of average. And then when we get into Modern Warfare 2, where they try to take the similar characters and similar story plots but drastically change what happened throughout the entire game making it seem as if no hero no protagonist actually dies because they're kind of coated in a indestructible shield like they were part of the mcu or even villains like graves being as much of a douchebag as he was he still lived he still was alive what are we talking about and i'm not saying this because i want bloodshed i want death all over the place but the fact is the grittiness that the old games initially had was completely gone right and the whole concept that modern warfare if you if you just think back call duty 4 modern warfare had changed the gaming landscape forever because it took actions or took events that were actually happening around that same time and made it into a simulation shooter that people got to experience firsthand for themselves. And because of how popular the games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Treyarch's World at War and even Black Ops and Modern Warfare 2, because of how successful those four groupings of games were, Call of Duty elevated itself to becoming a top five seller every single year, and for basically up until this very day. And what I noticed right away is that in these reboots, there is always going to be drastically changing stories, and it ultimately just makes it worse. Part of the problem with reboots is that it kind of spits in the face of all the old fans that enjoyed the original games. Because if you think about it, any slight change that you make to the story, maybe let's just say, for example, if Master Chief was more of a talker, he was a man child that gets extremely emotional and hell, you know what? Maybe he wants to sleep with someone from the Covenant. Oh, I just explained the entire Halo TV show. We've seen and experienced a Halo reboot before where they created an entirely new version of the original Halo IP 
And it was all like, what are we talking about? So when we start thinking about why is it so bad, then it kind of makes it clear as day that maybe doing a reboot of the Halo franchise is possibly the dumbest action you can take. But the question is, so if the reboot isn't the answer, then what is? And, I, and I'm going to sound like maybe this is just so simple or anything but i think it's you just need to launch a halo game with the basic content that should be there at the start like we if we compare how halo infinite started to how halo reach or halo 2 or 3 had been released and you could tell right away that there is a drastic difference in how the launch state of the game was and it, it, even if you want to compare it to more recent halo titles where if you look at how halo reach started or where there yes there was some lack of content content from Halo Reach in the beginning. There was. But at the end of the day, they did add a lot more playlist in a quick and fashion, and all the customization was there, and all this campaign co-op and firefight and all these things were already included in that multiplayer setup that it felt like, yeah, you know what? If I didn't want to play the campaign or I didn't want to play Team Slayer, I can go and play a different game mode because there's so many to do. And it also gave you something to grind for right away. And as much as I can applaud 3 for 3 for actually sticking to Halo Infinite and actually doing well in the more recent months since the Halo Winter update, I feel as if you can definitely criticize them for how crappy this launch was and show that, damn, imagine how successful Halo Infinite would have been if it actually launched in the current state that it is now back when the game first released. And Arash has made this point. Kevin Collex has made this point. I have made this point. Imagine what would happen if they actually put the effort in and launched the game completely. That's what's wild about the situation. Yes. Can I say that Halo Infinite did not hit the mark of what Xbox devs really wanted to see or Xbox executives really wanted to see? Yeah, no crap. But, you know, you're also part of to blame here, Microsoft devs. You're part of the problem. Like, if you're thinking to yourself, well, we want to maximize profits with little to no spending on resources, then I'm sorry to tell you that you're also going to get a lot of people pissed off that the content that they want in the game is not going to be there. In my opinion, when you think about how Halo can continue or fix its path, I kind of already made a video about this solution. But to, to quicken the process and just give a, a Cliff Notes version of it, maybe drop some actual maps to start the entire launch, drop some modes, give us a real customization where we can either pick our colors or at least have a diversification of all the different options that we can have for our Spartan and color schemes that go along with them. And give us some more modes that are excluded just from Arena. Give us Firefight, give us Forge. Like we should be getting more, give us Warzone. Like this should be a base expectation of what Halo is made for. Like we should, we should be doing more than just the, the basic idea that, hey, yeah, we have three game modes. Like, no, you don't want to be following in the multiplayer realm of crap that we are that we are living in. In my opinion, as long as you get the basic gameplay loop that Halo fans loved, which was the guns, grenades and melee, then I feel like those fans will be secure. I just also feel like the addition of social concept that felt like has been missing in Halo 4 really the past two games. I'm not saying Halo 4 was perfect, but at least it had co-op campaign. At least it had sp split screen. When you look at Halo 5, it was the first Halo game that actually made it a point to not have split screen ever. As much as I know it, it sucks not to have it for Halo Infinite, the reason why it was ever a point again was because Halo 5 set the stage of not having it anymore into their games. We're starting to see a trend. The more social aspects of Halo that are brought back or reintroduced or just kept consistent, those Halo games became the most popular. So if you want to fix or want to gain more momentum for not just Halo Infinite, but the next Halo game, then emphasize that point make it more of a social experience make it more where it's like you have in-game chat and you have veto system and you can check out other spartans in your lobby and stick with that same lobby and continue matchmaking those basic functions that we had in the old halo games that were very sociable features keep those there and i feel like people would be a lot more happier jumping in and trying halo that have never tried it before or even just the halo fans 
to go back again. I'll tell you one, Halo Infinite has definitely gotten a lot of momentum since its first launch. In the past few months, whether you want to talk about the start of it was the Halo Winter update or, or Season 3, there has been an uptick in population and people have been noticing that Halo's pretty damn fun. As much as there are still a ways to go, there is a lot of good things to say about Halo Infinite now than there definitely was before. But what do you think about the future of Halo? Would you reboot the series? Would you not? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.